Hi friends, this is Fanny Bhushan Nagula. Today we are going to learn about precise throughput timer. This precise throughput timer enables the user to determine the throughput which they want to inject in their test. So in our earlier session, we have learned about constant throughput timer, how it is different. If you want to inject the load at a constant pace, then the constant throughput timer is best use of it. If you want to inject the, the throughput at a randomized schedule, then precise throughput timer is best fit for it. So this timer introduces the, the calculated pauses to keep the, the total throughput in terms of number of samples per minute or hour as close as possible. So, as we learned in our earlier session, the throughput might depend on the, the capability of the server or the load injector machine to create enough threads or sometimes some requests consume more time which prevents the, the required overall throughput. So now let's understand how precise throughput timer is different from constant throughput timer so let's let me add one thread group here so if you take a standard thread group or ultimate thread group you might have seen you give ramp up period so for example if i am i want to inject 100 virtual users and if i'm giving a zero as my ramp up then all the threads would start at the same time. Means because my ramp up is zero, all 100 threads will be created at the same time and it would produce an unwanted spike of the load. On top of that, if you set up ramp up period, like for example, if I want to use 100 seconds. So if you are setting the ramp up period is too high, it might result in very few threads are available at the beginning to achieve the required throughput or required load. So the precise throughput timer schedules executions in a random way. So the precise throughput timer, if you look at, so we have the two options, throughput period and test duration. So it schedules execution in a random way so it can be used to generate the constant load. You do not need to add an extra random delays to mitigate startup spike. So this is one of the advantages when you compare with constant throughput timer. So apart from it, if you look at, so when you're using multiple thread groups in your test plan, so sometimes there might be a variation of ramp up issues when you're using multiple thread groups. So to mitigate that issue, the precise throughput timer adds random delay to each thread group. So threads start at a different time. This is also one of the advantages with precise throughput timer. So let's look at one, uh, for example, then we will understand all these options. Now, I have name comments. This is very common for every element in JMeter. Now, if you look at this particular section, which is talking about delay threads to ensure target throughput. So as it represents the target throughput, it helps us to inject the required throughput. Now, the target throughput in samples per throughput period. So the target throughput is in line with the, the throughput period which you're giving here. So for example, I want to inject 100 samples and I want to inject this 100 samples within the target period, the throughput period is 120 seconds. And this, when I'm giving the throughput period, the total time to achieve the desired throughput. So if you are giving 100 
as your the target samples which you want to inject and this will help us to the throughput period will help us to achieve the desired throughput now test duration so there is one more option here test duration so this ensures that exact number of samples for a given test duration so this will this test duration will help us to and create the required throughput within this test duration so the precise throughput timer creates a schedule at the test start off so based on this for example now in this case i am giving 120 seconds this whole execution will run for 2 minutes so the schedule will be created at the start of the the test and it is used means the schedule is used to release the threads so the required threads whatever we use it is used to release the threads so then our target throughput can be achieved let's understand i'm keeping the rest of the the batch departs departures or accuracy of generated delays those are all things i'm keeping it as a default now i am i have added one thread group here and i am using number of threads 10 i am using the ramp up period as one and i want to execute this for uh 120 seconds this also i'm keeping it same now i will add one uh, sampler dummy dummy sampler and i want to bring this precise throughput to timer under the thread group even if you can keep it under the test plan also so if you have multiple thread groups you want to use then the, the precise throughput timer is common across the thread groups now in this case i am using one dummy sampler and the precise throughput timer i have kept it under the the sampler now i am adding aggregate report so now let's see that i'm just uh, let me i have given the thread group the number of threads 10 and i'm giving the precise th uh, throughput timer the target is 100 samples within two minutes duration now let's go and execute it so i am yeah let me save this so i will name it as a precise okay let me it's already there i'll just use the same thing yes so the execution started now if you if you observe so i have one sampler here so you can see in the label and the samples are getting executed so as we have discussed so this precise throughput timer so the test duration it will create a schedule at this test startup so we may not be able to see but if you look at this now we have crossed 34 seconds but now uh, we have achieved around 27 samples within 40 seconds 28 so yeah this schedule is helping the schedule is helping to use the threads to achieve the the target throughput that is our 100 samples in 120 seconds so if you see uh, we are achieving means we are going to complete 60 seconds and which we are at 48 49 so and now if you look at so here it is around throughput 52 per minute this is not this is not going to define the throughput which we are uh, uh, looking at now our throughput is if you look at 100 samples in 120 seconds so if you divide this 100 by 120 means that will be a different case but that is mm, but if you look at yeah we are achieving 51 51 transactions per minute it will be almost the same so now for example if you are using 100 by 120 it will be similar to that and now we will are going to achieve the same thing now if you see we are about to complete our uh, test so we are left with two more seconds one yeah 
so if you see so we have just crossed we have just crossed 2 minutes that is 120 seconds and 1 second it it is due to we have used one ramp up means one second ramp up if you have given zero then it would have be it would be the same 100 samples so we have achieved around one or one samples that is what uh, we have we try to achieve as part of this now what are the other options available here let's understand this so now if you look at this it is talking about batch departures number of threads in the batch so there might be a case when all the samples should come in pair so now if you remember in our previous earlier session we discussed about synchronizing timer so how synchronizing helped us to release the threads in a sp spike manner so in the similar fashion this will help us to execute or execute the required target throughput in a batch wise fashion so if you want to achieve the spike you no need to use you need to go for the the synchronizing timer but using precise timer itself you can achieve this you can achieve the the spike so if you provide the number of threads in the batch it's this will help us to create those many samples the number of samples which you are giving here will be create in means will hit the the server in a spike manner but how again in synchronous time we also have one more option we talk about the time period to wait for those many threads to be pulled so in the similar fashion we also have here delay between threads in the batch so here for if whatever the time delay you are talking about in milliseconds it will wait for that many milliseconds before it releases the those threads so it will help us to create the the spike at a certain time period so for every uh, for example if you are giving uh, means 10 mil, uh, 10 seconds it, it means 10000 then for every 10 seconds those many uh, samples will be will hit to the server and apart from this we also have accuracy of generated delays so what it means accuracy why this accuracy is coming even though we are saying precise throughput timer is going to generate the target target throughput as close as possible uh, and is more um, more flexible compared to constant throughput timer but still why this is this section is coming here use approximate throughput when sequence length exceeds these many samples by default it is 10000 what it means so when the required when the number of samples is less than this limit timer will generate the exact number of samples so means as part of this precise throughput timer it has been given in such a way that okay you can mention the number of samples you can look at this if i if you are looking for one lakh transactions this one lakh samples will be generated accurately as much as possible as close as possible to your target throughput if it is the total number of samples are less than this number so what is the number you give here it will look for that and based on that it will provide the, the accurate results and if it crosses if this is crossed then it uses the approximate throughput when the sequence is means when the the number of samples are exceeding the the number given here so allowed throughput surplus in the percent so this will help us with the the maximum exact samples the samples required the timer might generate slightly more events than the specified throughput so one more option here so setting to ensure repeatable sequence so this is another thing for re uh, repeating the the sequence here so here if you understand random seed change from zero to random so here 
the value of zero means the timer is truly random non repeatable from one execution to another if you are providing any other number means if any other number it ensures the timer generates the same delays each test starts so it uses the same delay so the when i suggest you to use zero so it is random delay always and non repeatable from one sample to other sample so this is how the precise throughput timer is different from constant throughput timer and is more flexible and you can uh, generate uh, the spike also so this is more suggestible to get the the target throughput as close as possible thanks friends thanks for watching the video please subscribe to my channel and click on bell icon provide provide your valuable feedback thank you